Assemblyman uh, Sutterelli. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On the bill. A three- or four-year extension of the current law or a permanent 2 percent arbitration cap, in my opinion, is the bill we should be voting on today. If not that bill, then a bill that abolishes binding arbitration, substituted by the non-bonding mediation, fact-finding procedures other public sector unions use. The loopholes in today's bill, utilizing the cap only once during the two back-to-back -back arbitration cap laws, and requiring arbitrators to include, to include employee health benefit contributions and workforce reduction cost savings as salary compensatory are of great concern. Specific to the first loophole, anything other than an extension of current law, a permanent cap, or abolishing binding arbitration seems window dressing. Specific to the second loophole, we should be prohibiting, prohibiting arbitrators from including employee health benefit contributions and workforce reduction savings as salary compensatory. If this bill were to become law, we are wiping out the property tax savings made possible by all the reforms so celebrated here in Trenton. If this bill were to become law, what was the point of those reforms? Just this morning, the mayor of Princeton in the 16th district sent an email to a number of us, myself included. I quote, please amend this bill so that property taxpayers receive the full benefit of the reforms. We all acknowledge the property tax crisis. We all acknowledge the need for property tax reform. And yet, here we are voting on a bill that not only worsens the property tax crisis, it will make the 2% property tax cap virtually impossible. Dare I say that municipal police are, on average, more than well paid. Yes, police and fire put their lives on the line each day, but of their own free will. I know of other more dangerous professions that pay less. To enact this bill is to create a superior class of municipal employee. Yes, police and fire cannot strike. Yes, police and fire job descriptions are different. But that alone is not justification for superior compensation policies, policies vastly different from all other municipal employees. Let me also say this bill perpetuates the never-ending public sector mistake of ignoring two critical private sector macroeconomic principles, supply and demand, and ability to pay. There are those who suggest that this bill's cap is better than no cap at all. With all due respect to the sponsors, who I know are well-intentioned, and those who will ultimately vote yes today, I cannot in good conscience vote for yes on a bill that wipes away the property tax savings of landmark reforms, creates a superior class of municipal employees, and worsens New Jersey's property tax crisis by rendering the 2% cap impossible. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.